intellect that comes with it. And then the spiritual is the intimacy part. That's when you, when you go through the actual, actual of, of having sex, the actual act, okay? And the spiritual should never happen until what? You're married. But most of the time, you know, we, we just go straight to the spiritual but, but without even really dealing with the mental a lot. What do you mean? We, you can have, you having se we having sex with people we don't really even know. Times now, you gotta be delivered now. Come on, how you know you? You don't know them. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't been talking to them but a week, a month. Come on, somebody, you went out on a couple of dates. You don't know them. We gotta be careful, men, because. Our eyes will get us in trouble. Our gates. You our see, gates. the men, we have a thing, it's about what we see. <laughs> Women, it's about what they hear. But men, it's about what we see. Come on, somebody. See, a woman, you can mess around and see a woman in a negligible, my, my wife get in a negligible J and she ain't got to say nothing. Sure, come on, somebody. She ain't got to say a word. What I see, come on somebody, it's going to do it for me. But a woman is not like that. It's all about what they hear. They need to hear those sweet nothings. Come on somebody. They need to hear our love. They need to hear that you're looking good. They need to hear that you're sexy. Come on somebody. Help them, Pastor. Help huh? these men. I tell you what, if you tell your wife she look good enough, when the dude out there in the street tell her it ain't going to be no big deal. They're right. But if you can't never tell her, and homeboy in Walmart be like, ooh, sister, you bad. You going to mess around here? That's a bad chick. That's a bad chick, what they say. Come on now. What they, what, what's the bad chick here Right, because women like that, they flatter like that now. They just, they just made like that. Like to hear that kind of stuff. Come on now. When you walk, come on men, when your wife, you, when your woman put on a new outfit, man, tell her she looking good because she bought it to look good. Right. Come on now. You take notice. You need to take notice because if you don't, somebody's going to take notice. This is true. True. I like to watch my wife get dressed, you know, in the morning. I wake up and then I just I just lay there and watch her get dressed and <laughs> yeah, ain't nothing wrong, I ain't say what I say. <laughs> right. Men, did you know did you know this that See, the men, we're, we're so much about what we see. When they designed the Coca-Cola bottle years ago, you know why they, they made the Coca-Cola bottle the way it's shaped? It's after a woman's figure. And they, they knew that the men would buy the bottle. It was about the bottle. It wasn't about what was in it. The men were drawn to the shape. Come on now. It was a master plan. Because men, we like curves. Some of us like them more than others. You know what I'm saying? Big curves, little, little curves. All oh, you hear what I'm saying? But we like curves. We're attracted to them curves. Come on, somebody. So, when well, you see something you like, men, it's probably best to close your eyes. Yes, yes. Look the other way. Come Leave. on, let's keep it real. Flee from your youthful lust. Because some of you men, you know, we can go certain places and then women just everywhere. You be at the mall and be like, God, leave, man. You know, all over there. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. Yeah, y'all catch that. Some of y'all catch that next week. I'm going to keep it real with you. A pastor still a man, and I got eyes to see. Amen. So, you know, but we got to learn how to control them. Self-control, that's a fruit of the spirit. Self-control. Amen. Because women got ass too. 
Now here's something I want to I want to I want to I want to take us here for a minute because last week we talked about we talked about how masturbation is not right either. And many of us have been there. You know, it's kind of one of those things that you know majority of people at some point you mess around and come into the knowledge of yourself and you begin to do yourself. And that's not right. Because if God intended that to be, he never would have gave uh, Eve to Adam. It was all right for him to please himself. But no, as I say, it's not good that he be alone, so he not do that. Okay, so that's not right. Okay, and we know we need to refrain from that. Okay? Sex is not all about the physical act. This is why we're able to masturbate. Because it's not about being physically with somebody else. It's mostly about a mental thing as well. See, in order to, you know, be aroused and really uh, have sex and to copulate or whatever, it's also a mental thing. It's not all about the physical. It's a mental, there has to be a mental attraction. This is even why we're able to have what they call so-called wet dreams. Yeah, and you know, some of us have had those, and there was nothing physical about it. Right, right. You, went, you had a dream, or, and you woke up wet because of what you was dreaming about. So sex is not all about physical, the mental. Well, your mind there. This is why Paul says it's important that we renew our what? Renew our minds, our thinking. Amen. Be ye transformed. Amen. Now, we, we talked about logic, science, but now we're going to talk about the real live experience, what the real live experience says. Setting, above, setting all of that above aside for a moment, the best reason we give for a single person to stay away from anything, even remotely sexual, is because we have seen the results of sexual contact before marriage. I have confessed that to you all, and you all know, my son is here, my daughter was here last week, I had two teenage pregnancies, so of course I had sex before I was married. Amen. Like the many of us did. But it was nothing that I was proud of, I just was doing it, I didn't, I really, to be honest, I really didn't, to be honest, God no, I really didn't know what I was doing, what I, why I was doing it. A lot of people, a lot of time we're coerced and we just do it. We just do it. Being fast. Pastor says being fast. I don't know if they still say that these days. That girl so fast with your fast self. Manish, manish self. It's hot now. They don't call them fast. They call them hot. Our sexuality is like a whiteboard. Like a whiteboard. Right now it's clear, right? Clean. But we write on it with permanent markers or a dry erase marker. I'm just saying. All of the sexual messages we get from our culture makes marks on that whiteboard. If I, if I had one, I'll just write on it and, you know, to give y'all a little clearer analogy. Now, but because of how God created us, the things we experience while highly aroused make larger marks on that whiteboard. And the things we experience along with orgasm make the very largest of marks. So it can start little, then big, and then bigger on the white, because it's clear right now because you're a virgin, right? Again, this is a good thing in marriage. It doesn't matter why you're married. What we do with our spouse gets written down and becomes a part of what we want, expect, and what we enjoy. But what if we have sexual contact with several individuals before we marry? Several. The first person we are with leaves a mark on us. Each new partner leaves more marks on us because it goes, 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 it grows, it grows, it grows. And y'all hear it all the time here. The person you slept with, you just slept with that person, that person, the person they slept with. Blah, 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 blah. Before long, that, that board is just, you can't even see any white on the board. The first person leaves a mark. Each new partner leaves more marks on us. Soon our whiteboard is unreadable. Just, just mixed in. 
and our sexual expectations and desires are a mess. Can't be satisfied by nothing and nobody because we've experienced it all. What if the person you marry can't do that special thing, a former partner? Don't think you don't be think. Pastor said it last week or the week before last. I don't know how long we've been doing this, but you, that person, you can't satisfy your, 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 your mate because you're thinking about, man, that person, you got it's a higher standard. You've been with that person. This person don't do it the way they did. And you know you can't be satisfied. Mm-hmm. What if your spouse can't do something like something you like as well as the last person you were sexual with? What if you have come to enjoy and be aroused by the way a certain partner's body part felt or looked? And your spouse did not look or feel this way. That's why it's good to remain single. I mean, remain pure before you, until you get married because you don't have to deal with all these soul ties over and over again. Man, I wish, and you're not going to tell them. My mind is healed. They had a song, my mind is healed you. Well, what is it? My body is here with you mm-hmm, on the other side of town. That's what you be doing because you're like, man, I wish they this way or that way, the way the other person did. Why she don't, he don't do this. That's what we, in our mind, because we had so many different parties and before them and before them and before them and all these things, you mix signals. Pastor. No, he don't want to tell that. What if the man or woman you marry finds something you can, you have come to enjoy and want to do, but you know, like, man, this is gross. Ugh, I don't want I don't do that. I don't want to do that. But th- that's what you did with you when you were with the other partner. Mm, interesting. Or what if they need something that you don't like because of bad experience with another person? That's reality. Mm. Reality experience, real life experiences. Mm. What if you just wait until you are sure you are with the one you are going to marry? That will avoid all these problems. But not all of them. Well, for some of them, but not all of them. Unmarried couples don't have the same regular contact and opportunities that married couples have. And this means their sex life will not be the same as it will be when they do marry. There is the problem of habituation, becoming so used to doing used to doing something over and over again a certain way that you can't do it any other way. Yeah, that can be a problem. That is a problem. Um, because, you know, we have to learn, even as married couples, I guess, how to keep it interesting. Okay? And so many couples even drift apart because, like you said, it becomes humdrum. <laughs> uh, you know, it's not exciting anymore, you know, <coughs> as it used to be. So you have to, you, ha- you have to work at doing that. You have to work at doing it. Mm-hmm. Well, like you said a few weeks ago, you know, you got to pull a teddy pin the grass and turn, turn off the light, the light, light a candle, or whatever. Okay? Keep the spark alive is what he's saying. You got to keep it alive in your marriage, whatever it takes. Because I'll be like, no, I ain't. I mean, what? It, women. What you be thinking is a. Like, and he, if I ain't doing it, I mean, he's his man, he's somewhere else. If I can't please him, then what's going on? We got to go to the doctor, your libido low or what? <laughs> but if not, then we need to get, <laughs> what really, what is it? You know, at a certain point, you know, and you know, this is not an excuse. For us who've been married for a long time, uh, Ruth and Jim, what Jim? Ruth and Jim. It is not that I don't care how old you are, how long you've been married. I had to use my own folk and them, my people. But it doesn't matter. You got to keep the spark alive, whatever. Sometimes it's just holding hands, intimate. That's intimate. Whatever it takes, do something different to keep your, your sparks going in your marriage. Child's and child, I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever it takes. I can't ask the newlyweds uh, Int- the Pascals because you know they. Mm. 
They man, wow. they can probably teach hey. it. <laughs> Intimacy is not all about the actual the act of sex, you know. Uh, and it's uh, not, you, you know. You know, pillow talk is what they call it. It's also intimacy right. when you just sit up in the bed and, and right. you, you talk or, you know, you hug, you snuggle. All that's being intimate, you know. Uh, because, you know, the truth of matter of it is the older you get, the less important sex becomes anyway. Okay? Um, so there has to be something else to stimulate you. There has to be some conversation or... TV shows, or it's got to be something else that you can share, you know, to, to be intimate, to be together, to be alone. Amen? Uh, let's close with 1 Corinthians 10. Let's close there today. Turn now to 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, beginning at verse number 6. 1 Corinthians 10, beginning with verse number 6. It says, now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be idolaters as were some of them as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. It might have said, me, sex, sex can kill. Yeah, sex, sex kills. What they got AIDS. Amen. What that's talking about is when, y'all remember the story of when, when Moses went up to get the Ten Commandments? And he went up to get the Ten Commandments. He stayed so long, and folks, and they made a, a golden calf image, and they began to party. And they began to have sex and all that good stuff. And then when Moses came down, you know, God killed all of them. That was engaging in that. So sex does kill. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of us, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happen unto them for in sample. And they are written for our uh, admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. But will, with the temptation, also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. There's no lust, there's no temptation that's too strong that you can't overcome it. Those of you who started having sex, you can stop and wait until you get married. Amen? What you have to do is you have to make sure that you're looking for the way out. You'll never see the way of escape if you're not looking for it. I believe there's some people here that want to get out, but don't necessarily know how to get out. Now see, you can be in a thing so long. You know, it's, it's, it's so many women that's been in a relationship they want to get out of, but they don't know how to get out of it. They're fearful of getting out of it. They don't understand if they get out of it, you know, what it would be like. Because nobody wants to be alone. If you wrong, God says it's better to be alone than to be with somebody wrong. I got to believe that rhyme, didn't it? It's better to be alone than to be with somebody wrong. Boy, that'll preach right there. And let's be honest, so all of us have been with some wrong folk. But we found the right one. Come on, somebody, if you know. We know what wrong is. And there's some of us that need to get alone again. You're with somebody wrong. That's why you're catching hell. Man, I want to be real with you. That's why you're catching hell. That's why ain't nothing going right. It's wrong. It's 
through. And some of us singing that song, if love in you is wrong. Because you can get comfortable in what you're doing and you like what you're doing. That's why you singing that song. Right, when wrong seems right. Hmm. It's real stuff. You can, you can 